Hello everybody, welcome to our next installment in the adult Kempo Karate class, our virtual curriculum here on YouTube and on Facebook. So as always, when we do these videos, we love that you like them, that you share them, and that you post comments, photos, videos below, so that we have that interaction together. While we're not able to work together at the dojo, this is how we're staying connected. I love the emails, I love the comments that we get, and I appreciate the fact that so many people are utilizing the videos in one medium or another. So we're going to get started today again for all of our adult videos. We challenge you to warm up. We're going to do a little bit of a warm up here today, but if you require a lot of warm up, you need to pause the video and warm yourself up and then start the video again. But we will do something simple, a few minutes just to get the body moving. I'm going to bring in Mr. Stoffer. Thank you, sir. Mr. Stoffer is joining me today because, well, he's been joining me in most of our classes, haven't you now? Most of them, sir. Most of them. He's been doing great, helping out. But today in particular, because some of the stuff we're doing, I have a little bit of a bum knee today. So some of the stuff I need to utilize Mr. Stoffer to demonstrate properly. So, sir, let's bow in, shall we? Sir. And hit. And bow. Pepper jumps go. Just start bouncing. If you can't bounce, just start kicking it out, shaking it out. But whatever you're doing, start moving around. Sir, start bouncing, crisscrossing your legs. All right. Just keep yourself moving. If you have to, just shout a fight if you can't bounce. And get in there, just moving the body, doing something to keep yourself warm and loop. Feet together. All right, sir, go ahead and step more into the center for me. Sir. Thank you. All right, 25 jumping jacks. Ready? On your mark, get set, go! One. All right, two. Make sure we're going three, all the way up, all four, the way down. If you're going to go half up, six, if you have a shoulder issue, seven, just come into your side, eight, do those half jacks. Nine, ten. One. Very good. Two. Three. Four. Counting five, loud, that forces six, you to breathe. Seven. Eight. Nine. Twenty. One. Two. Three. Four, five. Nice. Okay, go ahead and put your right leg back. Ready, go. Hey. Set. All right, we're going to do those stutter step leg lifts, meaning that you're going to put your hand up, whether it's low, medium, or high. Today, I'm going to keep it medium just because of that bum knee. And I'm going to bring it up, put it down, switch, put it up. Bring it down. And I'm going to have Mr. Stoffer going starting now. Count of 10. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Very good. Feet together. Sir. All right. From here, put your feet apart. Going to do some seesaw leg lifts. That means we're going to do one to the right, one to the left. So it comes up one, and then one. And you keep going until we get to ten. Ready, sir? Sir. And go. One, one. <coughs> Excuse me. Two, two, keep three. Keep your hands up. Three. Four, if you really want to make four, it more difficult, focus five, on that sidekick five, form. So really six, focus the good six, sidekick form, but seven, then just swinging it up seven, instead of tucking and kicking. Eight, eight, a good knife edge on nine, that foot. Nine, ten, ten. Now, here's the fun part that my knee doesn't like today. All right, sir, go ahead and go down on all fours. Hands are up. Now, if you can't do what he's about to do, I want you to just do half squats, just warming yourself up if you've got any knee issues. Just start to warm those knees up. But... We're gonna do squat get-ups, which means your hands are on the head. And I'm gonna demonstrate a few with you. So from here, you're gonna bring one foot up, go to your squat position, then put the opposite knee down, up, put the opposite foot up, and step up. And just keep alternating your stance, ready? We're gonna try and do 10. Keep the low squat position, ready, and go. One. Two. Try to step up with a different foot each time. Three. There you go. Four. Switch five. Foot to get up. There you go. Six. That's perfect. Seven. Keep the hands up. Keep the back straight. Look at this guy if Eight. you can. Nine. Ten. This one is fun. From everybody going to stand up. Sir. All right. Go ahead and get in your square horse stance. Ready to go. Set. Hands are out. Just start those arm rotations. Get loosened up. Start small. Get real wide. Again, if you have shoulder issues, and just kind of shrug them if you can. Get those shoulders really wide. Just reverse it. And feet together. Set. All right, so we're going to work some kicking today. Now, kick where you're able to kick to, but challenge yourself. Whatever surface you're working on, pay attention to. If it's something nice and flat like I have, you're perfect. 
But if you're any type of tile or carpet or anything that you can slip on, make sure you're not wearing socks. Shoes might be great if you wear your shoes indoors. If you're working outside, pay attention to the uneven ground. But we're going to work our wheel kick from the front leg today. So go ahead and get into a fighting stance right leg back. Tight. Okay. So wheel kick. You can kick low, you can kick medium, you can kick high. But we're going to start from a, a range of combat to where you're out of the kill zone, meaning he can't touch me with his hand or his foot. All right, so to get to me, he is going to have to step to me. So he's going to use that back leg to step up and then throw his kick, boom, to whatever target he decides. Now for today, because we're both here and in the dojo, we're going to use a pad. We're use the kick balance. For you, if you're working out with home, at home and you have someone that can hold a pillow, a cushion, or if you have your own gear, you can use that. Or maybe you're just kicking the air, and that's fine too. But today, I'm going to use the pallet since we're both here. So we're going to start off by doing this wheel kick nice and easy. Not going fast, not going, not going overly slow. Just nice at a medium pace. Scale to 1 to 10, keep it around to 4 or 5. Okay? Focus on a good tuck and a smooth transition from, from your stance to your kicking position to the kick. So you want to make sure that this is nice and smooth. So let's just work that a few times. Ready? And go. One and up and down. Ready? And go. That's it. Ready? And go. And go. And go. So you got that smooth transition. And now I'm going to hold the target. And you know, start off warming yourself up, just kicking at a low or medium spot. And low, that may be, you know, that's subjective for you. What your low is, is your low. What your medium is, your medium. What your high is, your high. For Jonathan, high is up here. But for you, high might be down here. Whatever it is for it. But for Jonathan, I'm going to go ahead and work a medium for him. So he's going to do it nice and easy. Ready? And kick. Tight. That's it. Ready? And kick. Tight. And kick. Tight. Just warming it up. And kick. Tight. All right. Let's go ahead and switch sides. Ready? Now for us, we'll switch total sides so that they can see better view. But for you, all you need to do is switch sides. Let's work just going to the transition to the tuck. Ready? And move. Nice and easy. And move. And move. Just warming it up. And move. And move. Okay, now we're going to do that medium kick. Ready? And kick. Set. And kick. Set. And kick. Set. And kick. Set. And kick. Very good, let's switch sides again. So, now we're going to do the same transition, but we're going to change our kick. Now we're going to do the front kick. So same thing, if someone's holding the paddle or the cushion or whatever for you, make sure you're far enough away to where they can't kick you. But now he's going to do that same step up and front kick. Ready to go? So, and back. Just like that. So let's go to the transition phase again, just working that tuck for the front kick. Ready? And go. So when he comes up, boom, boom, and then he steps down. Ready? And go. That's it. And go. Now let's eliminate the time, as much time as we can, in that transition from tuck back to stance. So from stance to tuck, back to stance. Ready? And go. Just like that. That in itself is going to be a workout. That's going to be timing, flexibility, balance, coordination. Ready? And go. That's it. Ready? And go. And go. And go. And switch sides. Tight. Let's do the same transition. Ready? And go. And go. And go. Go. Last one. Go. All right. Stay on this side. Tight. Let's go ahead and do it now and execute that kick. Again, I'm going to start at a medium spot. I suggest that if you're not really warmed up, that's where you start. But put it where you want it. Ready? And go. Tight. Now, obviously, the striking surface for the front kick, don't hit those toes, don't hit the top of the foot, make sure you curl those toes back, hit with a good ball, or really bring the foot high and hit with that heel. Whatever you decide to do, work the front kick that you want. Ready? And kick. Set. Good. And kick. Set. And kick. Set. Now I want you to kind of do it a little faster, and I want you to put it like you don't want me to see it. Ready? And go. Set. Oh, there it is. Kicks like this are great really low into the groin area hitting a large muscle mass like the quad. Very fast, when someone's attention is high, they're stepping up to you and all of a sudden I'm thinking I'm gonna get Jonathan, my hand attention's right on the side, boom, I never saw that coming. Right, and that's the value of this kick. So it doesn't have to be high to be a great kick. The low kicks are awesome, ready? And kick, set, and kick, set, and kick, set. Now let's switch sides, set. Ready, 
Let's work that kick. Ready? And kick. Set. And kick. Set. And kick. Set. And kick. Set. So let's put a little challenge on this. So now we're going to do the step up, front kick, wheel kick. Ooh, here we go. Let's do it slow. Ready? And or at a medium pace. Ready? And go. Set. Set. Now that transition from forward to pivot on the ball of your supporting leg is going to take some practice. Now if you have knee, ankle issues, I don't want you to work that transition. I want you to do it two separate times, meaning you're going to do it like this. He's going to go to the front kick, put the front foot down so that he can transition as he wheel kicks. So very slowly, he'll do the step for the front kick, step, the foot's down, step, and then back. You see what he did? Let's do it again. And go. Set. Set. And down. So once we're here and we go that front kick, boom, I just put my foot down. And now I'm able to execute that secondary wheel kick and I'm, or, and I'm able to execute that transition without having to pivot and put the stress on my knee. So if you have any issues with your ankles or knees, that's the way I want you to do the kick. For Jonathan, I'm going to have him do it the more advanced way because he's still young and unbreakable. For now. Ready? Well, you heal fast anyway, isn't that right? Yeah. Okay. Ready? And kick. Set. Set. Nice. Ready? And kick. Set. Set. Good. Ah, a little hot. Ready? And kick. Get the balance. Set. 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 Last one. Ready? And kick. Set. Set. All right. Let's switch sides. Set. Again, protect yourself. If you have the knee, you know what knee issues or the ankle issues, you know what to do. Ready? Jump We're going to start off just at a medium pace. Ready? And go. Good, ready? And go. Set, set. Ready? And go. Set, set. All right, now I want you to pick it up. Ready? And go. Set, set. Nice, ready? And go. Set, set. Ready? And go. Set, set. Ready? And go. Got a little too close. Set, set. Excellent. Now I kept all of Jonathan's kicks at a medium level. We could have easily done low, high, and we could have mixed it up, and you can do all of that to challenge yourself how you want, whether you have someone holding a paddle for you or not. Challenge yourself. Again, sometimes you have to slow down the speed up. Make sure that you're having quality practice and you're not fooling yourself and being very sloppy in your form and technique at the, you know, at the expense of trying, or trying to be fast at the expense of your technique. So if you're just being really super fast, but your technique is lousy, well, if you're not kicking anything, especially someone, you're not gonna realize that it's flawed until you actually do. So, all right, we're gonna do a level one technique called Whirling Mantis. So Whirling Mantis is for a combination punch, that jab, cross, punch. So we have to stand feet together, jump up, stand right next to me, please, sir. Okay, we're gonna step forward to the 45 degree with our left leg, and as we do that, we're gonna execute a double outward extended block. Now that front block here, as you can see, my nose, hips, toes, everything is pointed to that, that left 45, right? and I'm blocking that first punch. I'm gonna bring this leg in as I transition to the angle that you see my right hand at, and inward block the second punch. I'm in a cat stance now, right? So now I'm gonna go over my arm with the middle knuckle fist to the eye and a front kick to the groin. Oh, and then I'm gonna cover. Ready? So whirling mantis. So as I step to that 45, that outward extended block, boom, transition with the inward block and Boom, and cover. Okay, one more time. Left leg, stepping to that left 45. Knees, hips, toes, shoulders, everything's pointed to that 45. My right hand is outward extended block in front of me. My left hand is right here by my ear. I'm gonna turn my body to the right, transition inward block to my cat. I right, block that second punch. And I'm going to double strike, middle knuckle fist, and front kick. Boom. And cover. Now when you do the technique in its transition, these things happen very quickly, right? So right now we're going to keep it really, really slow, work the form. Ready? So I'm going to have you step in. Sorry. So, whirling mantis, slowly. And begin. Sorry. Very good. One more time, ready? Whirling mantis, and go. Set. Excellent. So, if you need to, work that, you know, 
one a million times, stop the video when you're ready to go move on, but you start the video. So the next technique we're going to do is a level two technique called darting serpent, which is for someone reaching in at you, they're reaching in to push or grab. So we're going to step forward with our right leg and execute a double or a wedge block. Okay, the wedge block, I see a lot of people often come in like they're pushing, but I want you to get those fingers pointed towards each other. The arms are going to clear as you circle around and strike to the groin. After you hit the groin, they're going to hunch over. You are going to circle back around, doing two back knuckles to the kidneys as you shuffle back. Shuffle back in, finger ring, thumbs in the eyes. Come down the arms, hit the arms, drag, dragging them down, causing that whiplash effect. Back knuckle to the temples. Hammer fist into the side of the neck. Bring those ulna, or the ulna bone into the side of the neck. Grabbing the head. Boom! Sandwich to the knee. And cover up. So as we step in, we execute that wedge block. Separate the hand, swing it around, go to the groin. Attack the kidneys with the back knuckle, shuffle back into the eyes, boom! Drive the arms, pop them. Back knuckles, hammer fist, grab the head, down, and cover. So, as this technique happens again, step in and separate, groin, back knuckle, eyes, arms, back knuckle, hammer fist, grab, one more time, darting serpent, step in, separate, swing around, palm claw to the groin, kidneys, eyes, arms, back knuckle, hammer fist, strike, and cover. All right, so I'm going to have you do the technique of speed. Set. Ready? Darting serpent. And go. Set, 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 set. Very good. Nice medium pace like that. Ready? And go. Set, 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 set. Very good. Be together. Set. All right. So another technique for review. Now next week we're going to work level three techniques. That'll be in a three or four part video part series. And I think that'll start coming out towards the end of the week. So, feet together. As always, practice. That's what we're doing. Until we're able to meet again, this is the way we have it, whether it's our virtual classes that we record for YouTube or Facebook or the Zoom classes that we get together every week, twice a week. However you're able to stay in touch, do. When you practice at home, take it in small bites. You don't have to do the whole chart. You don't have to do every cottage. Just focus on the quality of your practice and not so much the quantity of it. And don't forget that physical fitness routine. Work that cardio. Work a little bit of that strength training. Do some body weight exercises, your push-ups. If you have a pull-up bar, your squats, dips, you can use chairs. There's all sorts of things that you can use to just make sure that you're keeping your body and your mind fresh during this time. It's a stressful time but it's a challenge. And you know what? We thrive in challenge. That's what we do. Sir, you got it? Sir. Thank you. And as always, be safe. Have fun with this training. Train with passion. God bless. I'll see you next time.